time. Well, you sure it's so wonderful to see you this morning. Isn't it great to worship the Lord on a Sunday morning? And I just love the birds that are singing with us every Sunday morning. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord. Well, let me begin with a question that I think many people would have been asking this past year. Why did COVID-19 happen? Why does God allow plagues and pandemics to occur? COVID-19, of course, is not the first pandemic to devastate humanity. There have been many plagues and pandemics throughout human history. In 541 AD, for example, the plague of Justinian killed 25 million people in Constantinople. In 1347, the Black Death killed over 50 million people in Europe, which was more than half the population. And the Spanish flu killed around 500 million people between the years of 1918 to 1920. And even right now, you know that there are other plagues apart from COVID-19 ranging in other parts of the world, such as the Zika virus in South America and Ebola in Africa. Now, if you're an atheist who doesn't believe in God, such disasters are an inevitable byproduct of a world without pur uh, purpose or design. But if there is a God who is good and sovereign over all things, it does raise the perplexing question of why God allows such disasters to happen. You know, what good purpose could there possibly be behind COVID-19? Well, thousands of years ago, God sent 10 terrible plagues upon Egypt. And that is what I want us to look at today. I hope that you've done your homework for reading Exodus chapters 7 to 10, because we won't have time to read through all these chapters today. Rather, I just want to give a brief overview of these 10 plagues. And what I want to focus on today is, why did God send the 10 plagues upon Egypt? And what can we learn from them? Is there anything about the templates that applies to us today, particularly given what the world is going through right now? But first, just to refresh your memory, in chapters 3 and 4, we saw God call Moses to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. But when Moses returned to Egypt to deliver God's message to Pharaoh, Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go. And instead, he made the life of the Israelites even harder by making them do even more forced labor. This came as no surprise to God, however, because God had already predicted that Moses would not let his people go unless God used a mighty hand to force Pharaoh's hand. Well, chapter 7 and 10 is the part where we see how God did that. This is the part where we see a confrontation between the gods of Egypt and the God of Israel. God sends ten devastating plagues upon Egypt, and by the tenth plague, Pharaoh is so beaten up into submission that he literally begs the Israelites to leave his country. So what were the ten plagues? Well, I put them up on the slide for you to see in chronological order. You can read for yourself. I won't go through each one. But what I do want you to notice is that there is a progression in intensity and severity. Notice how the first three plagues are now becoming blood, the plague of frogs, and the plague of mosquitoes. They didn't really cause much damage. They were just more of an inconvenience and discomfort. Plagues 4, 5, and 6, however, did uh, the, the flies, the, life, the death of livestock and the uh, boils did a bit more damage. And the 7th, 8th, and ninth plague were even more severe because they literally crippled Egypt's, Egypt's economy. And of course, the worst plague of all was the 10th plague, which saw the death of every firstborn son of every Egyptian household. From 
From this, we can see that the ten plagues were not a series of random events. Rather, God was firmly in control of the entire process. God ramped up the severity of the plagues in response to how the Egyptians responded. So which begs the question, why did God send the plagues? What was his purpose behind it? Well, if you read chapter 7 and 10, you will see that there were three main reasons why God sent the place. First, God sent the place upon Egypt so that they may know him, so that people may know him. When Moses announced the first play, this was what God said to Pharaoh in chapter 7 verse 17. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. As you can see here, this phrase, I am the Lord, is repeated at least 19 times throughout the book of Exodus and at least 9 times between chapters 7, or 6 to 10 alone. Now here's a tip for you whenever you read the Bible. If something is repeated many, many, many times, it must be important. So why did God send the plagues? So that people would know him. He is Yahweh, the great I am, who is eternal, ever existent, the ever and all becoming one, who is Lord over all things. When Moses announced the seventh plague, this is what God said to Pharaoh in chapter 9, verse 13. How about you guys read it as I drink some water? Sorry. Have in life to know God. 
What is the eternal life that Jesus gives? To know God. What is the best thing in life? To know God. What in humans give God most pleasure? Knowledge of Himself. Once you become aware that the main business that you are here for is to know God, most of life's problems fall into place. Be friends. Is that your main business in life? Can you say that you know God personally, like how you know your best friend or your family members? Let me ask you, how much time do you spend uh, with God each day? Because if we truly see knowing God as our ultimate aim in life, that would be our number one priority. Okay. Reading the Bible, going to church, prayer, fellowshipping with other Christians, that would take precedence over every other thing in our life. Is knowing God your ultimate priority in life? Do you really know Him? This was a Facebook post that came out during COVID-19. No movies, no concerts, no sporting events, no restaurants, no social gatherings, no school, limited workload. Now that I've cleared your schedule, can we now talk? God. Perhaps COVID-19 was God's way to get our attention because for too long, we have turned our backs on God. We have ignored Him and told God that we don't want Him in our life. And so the only way to get our attention, the only way to get us to know Him is for God to give our lives a bit of a shake up to show us how really helpless we are without Him. That leads us to the second reason why God sent the ten slaves to humble the Egyptians and Pharaoh to, so that people will humble themselves before him. A question that often gets asked when it comes to the ten slaves is who hardened Pharaoh's heart? Because there are some verses that say Pharaoh hardened his heart against the Lord and there are other verses that say it was God who hardened his heart. So, which one's correct? Who was responsible for hardening Pharaoh's heart? God or Pharaoh? And if it was God, does that mean that Pharaoh should not be held responsible for his actions? Does that mean that it was unfair for God to punish him when God was the one who hardened his heart? Well, when you study the ten things more closely, you will notice an interesting pattern emerges. Notice that in the first five plagues, it was Pharaoh who hardened his own heart against the Lord. Only from plague six onwards do we see God beginning to harden Pharaoh's heart. Now what does this tell us? What this tells us is that God was merely facilitating a process that Pharaoh himself initiated. Pharaoh chose to harden his heart against the Lord all God did was reinforce the choice that Pharaoh had made. So God is not the one who is at fault here. Pharaoh is. Because God is not a God who forces his will upon people. He is a God who respects freedom of choice. And if we choose to harden our hearts against God, God goes, okay, have it your way. As Charles Spurgeon once said, the same sun which melts the wax hardens the clay, and the same gospel which melts the same person's repentance hardens others in their sins. You see, there are only two ways the human heart can respond to God. Either our hearts are like wax, which softens under the warmth of God's word, or our hearts are like clay, which hard is hardened 
by God's word. And when a piece of clay is hardened, like this piece of clay that I've left out in the sun for a few days, you can see it's probably starting to crack. What is the only way to soften it up? Can anyone tell me? What's the only way you can soften up this piece of clay? That's right, add some moisture and what else? You have to keep squeezing it, right? That's what they do. The potter, they, they, it's called um, kneading. They knead the clay, right? Well, our hearts are just like this clay. The only way we can keep our hearts soft is to keep letting God, God's word, mold our hearts. And conversely, each time we resist God's word, our hearts get a little bit harder. Each time we resist God's word, it adds an extra layer of hardened crust around our hearts. And the long, the, the more we resist God's word, the harder our hearts get. Until eventually, you may find that the only way to soften up your heart is to use a sledgehammer to break <laughs> it up. Well, that was what God was doing in the ten plagues. You know, He was using the ten plagues to soften up Pharaoh's heart. He was humbling Pharaoh. In chapter 10, verse 3, this is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews, said to Pharaoh. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? The ten plagues were actually an act of mercy from God because God was giving Pharaoh an opportunity to humble himself. But how did Pharaoh respond? He kept hardening his heart against God. The more God tried to humble him, the, hard, the, more, the harder Pharaoh's heart became. Until it was no longer possible for him to repent. He had reached a state of rebellion against God that was no longer redeemable. And all God could do was Harden his heart even more. Dear friends, are we also in danger of hardening our hearts against the Lord? I've come across many people who think that they still have plenty of time to believe in Jesus. For now, they just want to enjoy life and live life by their own rules. They think that they can time it so that they believe in Jesus just before they die. But do you know what the problem is with this line of thinking? What these people fail to realize is that the longer you resist God's word, the more hardened your heart becomes. Until eventually you may, you may find one day that your heart has become so hard that repentance is no longer possible. That was what happened to Pharaoh. Don't make the same mistake, my dear friends. Humble yourself before the Lord now, because that's the best time to do it. And don't wait until you get to a point where God himself begins to harden your heart. Perhaps COVID-19 was God's way of humbling us. Because there are so many parallels between our society and our Egypt, isn't it? Like Egypt, we too are a society that have refused to listen to God and harden our hearts against Him. Just take a look at what is happening in our society now with regards to sexuality, marriage, euthanasia, abortion, gender identity and authority of Scripture. Biblical values are being eroded at a rate never seen before. Like Egypt, we too are a society that has defied God and set up our own gods. When COVID-19 hit our country, how many news headlines read, time to pray and ask God for mercy? How many people did you see say, guys, we need to repent? Instead, what do we do? We put all our hope and trust in science and human ingenuity. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should not listen to the medical experts and scientists. 
All I am saying is that we have completely taken God out of the picture. God did not even get a mention. Like Pharaoh, we have told God that we do not need him in our lives. Perhaps COVID-19 is God's big wake up call to all of us that we need to humble ourselves before him and repent. That something worse happens to us. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, God says, When I shut the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will what? I thought you read it together. Will what? Could God be saying the same to us right now? Dear friends, do you need to humble yourself before the Lord today? How hard has your heart become towards God? What areas in your life have you ref kept refusing to obey God in? Dear friends, don't allow yourself to reach the point where there's no turning back for you. Don't allow yourself to reach the point where God begins to harden your heart. The best time to repent is now. Humble yourself and seek the Lord for mercy, because only He can save you. This leads us to the third reason why God sent the ten plagues. So that his people would worship him. So that people would worship him. What was God's primary purpose in setting the Israelites free? Was it so they could have a better life? Was it so they could have their own land? Was it so they could be free from oppression? All these are true, but what was the ultimate purpose for which God set the Israelites free? Well, eight times, this is what God said to Pharaoh. Let my people go so that, what? So that they may worship me. Why did God deliver the Israelites? So that they may worship him. That is what true freedom is, my dear friend. Amen. True freedom is not a life without any restrictions or rules. True freedom doesn't mean that you're able to do whatever you want. True freedom is a life of worship. Amen? Amen. Because that is what we were made for. We were made to worship God. And when we are not worshipping God, we will worship other things. Have you ever wondered why we are so easily addicted to things that consume all our time, energy, and finances? Just trying to go one entire week without using your mobile, TV, or computer, or whatever else it is that you spend a lot of time on. And that will tell you how much of a hold that thing has over your life. The Israelites were in bondage to the Egyptians. How about us? What are we? in bondage to? Wealth? Success? Power? People's approval? Career? Entertainment? Sport? Health? Relationships? And the biggest one of all, sin. When the nation was in lockdown, the rate of did you know that the rate of depression and anxiety and mental illnesses skyrocketed? Why? Because people were no longer able to go out and do the things that gave their life meaning and purpose. The lockdown really showed us the things in our life that we cannot live without. Why are we so easily enticed by the things of this world? Because we were made to worship. And when we are not worshipping God, we will worship other things. The problem is, do you know what happens when you worship things other than God? They end up enslaving us. They end up controlling our lives. They put us in bondage. 
we become slaves to sin, as Romans chapter 6, verse 18 says. But what did Christ do for us at the cross? He set us free from the power of sin. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Notice how Christ sets us free from one thing so that we become slaves to another. We have become, we have been set free from sin so that we can become slaves to God. Because that is what true freedom is. True freedom is slavery to God. Because that is what we were made for. We were made to worship God. And only when we live a life of worship will we have a true freedom. Only when we live a life of worship will we have a life of true meaning, fulfillment, and satisfaction. In chapter 9, verse 16, God says to Pharaoh, But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. What was God's ultimate purpose in sending the place? To promote His glory, so that all people would worship Him. Perhaps that is why God allowed COVID-19 to happen. So that we would worship Him. Amen? God used the ten plagues to show the Egyptians just how worthless and powerless the gods that they worship really were. Could God be doing the same with us today through COVID-19? Think about it. It took, it took just a tiny little virus to put millions of people out of work or sporting music and other recreational events to be cancelled, billions of dollars to be wiped off the stock market and property market, all holiday troubles to be banned, and people's entire life savings to disappear within just a matter of weeks. And despite all the pride that we put in our scientific and technological advances, there was not much we could do to stop this virus. God used COVID-19 to show us just how worthless and futile the idols that we worship really are. In his book, Counterfeit Gods, Tim Keller writes, An idol is anything more important to you than God. Anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God. And anything that you, that you seek to give you what only God can give. What are your idols, my dear friends? What things in your life have taken God's place? Don't worship fake idols, my dear friends. We can do nothing for you. Worship the one and only true God who reigns over all and has sent Jesus to save you. Because only Jesus can rescue you. Only Jesus can set you free. Amen. Only Jesus can fill that void within you and give you life, abundant and eternal. Amen. Amen. So why does God allow plagues to happen? What would God be trying to tell us through COVID-19? He's telling us. I am the Lord. Get to know me. Humble yourself before me and worship me. Will we do that today, church? Will we come to know God, humble ourselves before Him and worship Him? Well, let us now stand and sing a song to worship our Lord. And if from if today you would like to we dedicate your life to the Lord. If today you realize that for too long you have ignored God, and today you would like to come back to Him, to get to know Him, I invite you to come forward during the worship time and we can pray for you.
If you would like God to fill your life, I invite you to come forward and we can pray for you. Let us stand and sing.